beautiful souls. I hope you're well. Today we have another opportunity to have a super interesting combo and exchange with our beautiful friend uh, Quentin Nagios from Holos Healing. Uh, today we wish to share with you to have a conversation on the topic of uh, what Quentin will define a little bit later as to um, what he calls evolution. And also we wanted to touch upon the subject of the sense of purpose in our lives and um, the use of the word mission and how these three words kind of uh, define certain things that uh, Quentin would like to perhaps talk a little bit more about. This way we can know exactly, you know, what we what we mean by these words and what they entail. And then after that, we can just let the conversation flow on that subject if that's uh, that's good with you. So uh, without further ado, how, how are you, Quentin, today? Good, 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 good. Thanks for having me back. It's always a pleasure. Same here. Thank you. I think it was, I just wanted to say as well, like a big thank you for everyone. Um, and especially Elena, again, you know, for having shared our last video. And then Gail and I, we both had amazing feedbacks. And um, so, yeah, it was, uh, uh, it was, it was great. So, yeah. yeah, I want to join you also to thank you everyone for the beautiful comments, uh, you know, online on YouTube, but also in privately and everything. It's it's very appreciated. Again, thank you, Elena, as well for sharing um, our video, which gave it a lot of uh, visibility, which was appropriate, uh, appreciated. And mostly what's good about that is not to be famous or anything like that, but it's really about touching more people and bringing, you know, this stuff to other people and more people as we can. And and uh, so this is the whole fun of it is to uh, just try to touch as much people as we can with uh, our humble exchanges and the fun we have together. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Quentin, let's go deep into the subject now. Um, yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we talked about these three words, evolution, purpose, and mission. And so if you'd like in, in any order you'd like to perhaps give us a little bit of your definition of uh, what you what you mean by these words and you know how we can talk about them. Yeah. So it came to me uh, because lately, like especially in my practice, and um, I feel like there's this whole um, idea and a lot of, of people when they're studying you know, you know, work and, um, you know, starting to yeah, just go within, um, they feel this sense of, you know, oh, what's my purpose? And then further, it's like, one, what, what's my mission? And to me, that the, those two definitions, those two words that really have a connection with uh, the word evolution. So I'll start, like, for me, evolution is... So we have this idea that human beings, I mean, in mainstream anyway, we have this idea that, you know, um, um, as we are now, human beings are at the pinnacle of the evolution. Um, and, um, you know, I feel like uh, evolution is just, it's, it's progression, it's growth, um, it's um, the natural, um yeah the natural growth in 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 everything that is living and and creation and uh, in um and that that encompasses like really everything like like a natural and, process yeah exactly but to me that also encompasses like you know for me what i like every time that um when i talk about evolution i, I mostly talk about the evolution of consciousness because um, for me, that really has a, a, the evolution of, co of consciousness is what is going to take us one step further into the evolution physically, um, you know, in society. And um, and then also, you know, it's um, I believe it was Elena that was saying that, um, you know, we or maybe it was Tohan or one or the other, um, whatever, um, you know, the, the, the importance of um, um, evolve our consciousness with technology. You know that there has to be a certain balance for a whole society or for species to really evolve and get to the next level. So I think this is really like the evol evolution in in general is just really crucial in in you know where we're experiencing at the moment, where we're at at the moment as a species. And so would so you? I'm sorry to cut you. Just a second to a precision. So would you equate or would say that it's kind of synonymous for you the word evolution with? You know what a lot of people talk about in the spiritual com community about ascending 
and uh, this transition to 5D. Would you equate the two things? Would you say that this is what you mean by evolution? Uh, well, it encompasses, of course, evolution encompasses much larger concepts, but would you say that you would replace the term, you know, ascension or whatever with the term evolution? Is that for you sort of a synonymous, a synonymous yeah. word? Yeah, okay. So this way we were on the same uh, definition. Yeah, because yeah, I think ascension, ascension for me, it really has a, it feels very, it feels very scary or very uh, like impossible, like something. Oh my god, ascension! What well, it means that I, I need to become something. Whereas evolution, yeah. it's a natural path. You know, it's it's yeah. it's happening anyway, and we evolve, you know, naturally, like. Um, I was thinking about it this morning, actually, and I was thinking like as a when we evolve as a child, as a baby to a child to an adult, you know that's already evolution and so on. You know, it's just based in natural way. So yeah, I would definitely for me it's a synonym, but I am, you know, I just the term evolution speaks to me a lot more. Yeah, and also that concept of ascension gives a little bit of a pressure uh, in, behind. And I think that also kind of resonates with you, the same thing with the word mission, which also you feel like there's a little bit of that pressure going on with the mission thing. So if you wish to perhaps offer your definition of mission or how do you see this? Yeah. So, okay. When it comes to mission, I think like... Um, It's very, it's very delicate and very subtle um, because, as you say, like when we say mission, it can come as um, something with, oh, what's my mission if I don't? I think a mission just. Um, I believe people have some mission, you know, I do, and I, but I don't think it's something that you 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 look for. I, mm -hmm. I think it's something that just sort of happened. That is your what I call your calling, you know. Yeah. Um, so to me, that's the mission is your calling is something that you, you, you know, I want to say, you know, incarnated to do, you know, yeah. so, um, but in the same time, purpose, I think purpose is, um, how can I explain this in my, in my way? purpose is really something about just being so the purpose of me being because it has a purpose you know and yeah. i think this, this is where i want i wanted to go a bit it's like the, the the purpose of um evolving the purpose of you know going within or the the purpose of um healing ourselves you know is is um what gives us the opportunity to evolve and also what gives us the opportunity to bring our mission to life. Would you say, for example, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you would define, define again, I don't like defining things, but just to understand each other, that um, purpose would be more like a state of being while the mission, and we put it in quotes, would be more like a what you do, like the doing versus the being type of thing? Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a notion of that for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think the, yeah, because the purpose to me is really, um, and I, I really want to bring that really, as you, you know, as you say, like very grounded and things like that. So healing ourselves, you know, and doing the work um, towards, you know, being, um you know more at peace being happier being etc is a is a purpose it has a purpose with for the collective it has a purpose for you know the evolution itself of, of consciousness of consci consciousness mm -hmm. um you know so there is it has a still a notion of doing you know because mm -hmm. we say do the work yeah Whereas to me the mission has really to to it, it has a it correlates with someone's essence, someone's um, someone's soul almost, you know, like someone's. Okay. Um, is that 
Does that yeah. So I mean, the, the the dichotomy between doing and being is not really that what you mean because there is essence within the mission, and there is also uh, within the 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 purpose. There's this sense of uh, of doing as well. So I guess it was perhaps not a it was a sort of a shallow definition. So let's no. keep let's take away that element of being and doing because it's not ex it's not exact. It both can have a being and doing within themselves. So yeah. Yeah, yeah 100%. And mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's to it, at different levels. Yeah. So I I think like um it's really interesting what you bring though because I think the the purpose is being um mainly and then doing you know for myself and whereas the the mission is is um doing you know, mainly and being, so it's sort of like, to me, yep. it's sort of like this two pieces of the same coin, you know, so. Yep. Um, understand, exactly. I, I remember, um, I uh, I don't know if you know Joseph Campbell. Uh, have you ever read Joseph Campbell, who's a no. mythologist? He's a really fascinating person. And uh, I will not get into the details of that. But if you have an opportunity to read uh, his material, he was a, he studied mythology, comparative mythology in all the, the different societies of the world and history. It's really, really interesting. Anyway, uh, and he talked about the notion of following your bliss follow your bliss i don't know if you ever heard that expression it's it has become something very known now follow your bliss and um it's always been this bliss thing has always be a, a questioning within me is like what is my bliss is it something i feel within is it like what you would call perhaps a purpose a sense of you know beyond the healing myself and going within you know it's about that frequency it's about that thing that just like ugh, you know grabs you by the the stomach and that's really your thing you know and as well the mission or the thing you do for you know on on terra on the world for people or whatever and would you say that this word of following your bliss is about being something or is it about what you do for others for example or how you do it i don't know it Perhaps I'm just adding another word to our complicated <laughs> <laughs> definitions here, but I find it's a it's a because I find the word bliss really goes into your stomach, into your your a little bit like we were talking about the frequency, how it's really something that's like grabs you, you know, it's something that resonates really hard in you. And so how can we conciliate this this notion of bliss that things that drives you? into the sense of purpose or of the sense of, of mission? Is there something you'd like to talk about? Yeah, I, I love our conversation. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> It's always um, a pleasure. So I think like following your bliss, I think to me following your bliss is, is sort of like both combined together. Mm -hmm. I, think it's, I think like, so on this, if you if we were to put bliss on a scale, I think it's a frequency that is even higher than love. It's like the most, is the is the is the top sort of frequency in terms of um vibration so yeah. high vibration. so i think bliss is um to me it, it's sort of feeling the bliss is like when you feel completely whole when you, so you it's like you um you've accomplished your purpose and your your following your mission mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like a a result basically of following all that you are when you are in contact with what you really are because you went within and you did the work yeah yeah, yeah. but i think like with i think bliss is is something continuous you know i don't necessarily i think it's something that happens eventually you know that, mm -hmm. that can happen eventually um and then just sort of, to me, I don't know, I, I see it as a, something that really resonates in, in terms of longevity, you know, rather okay. than rather than something that is just like an illumination. And then, mm -hmm. and then you know, I, yeah. I see bliss as something, I see bliss as like endless and infinite. It's something you cultivate as well. And it's not so much a doing, again, it's more like a result of being. Um, a little bit like when you're in your frequency, you're not doing things to be in your frequency. You are in your frequency. So I guess the bliss is, a, is the same thing, is that it's a result of a whole process of just letting go and taking away obstacles. And then you just find your light, which is, you know, the fractal of source that you are. But then it also, since we are beings on Terra, on Earth, on 3D, or, you know, 
moving perhaps higher, but still on this this plane. I guess perhaps bliss is also taking a physical form and through our actions, through like you say, our physical mission, what we do, what we are. And so it's it's not like just bliss and floating in space and in complete, you know, joy and connected to source. It's also something you we need to experience here on Terra as a grounded thing, as a thing we try to bring into our it's like it's like um incarnating spirituality like putting it spirituality that's incarnated in the body in our actions i don't know if if you know anyway i don't know where yeah. i'm going with that i'm just you know but 100 i think it's it definitely um i, I definitely think that it's some, I'm, like correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like you what you're saying is that it's something that you bring here rather than you go somewhere exactly right? yeah you bring that can be brought into matter and and um which would be our purpose, basically, as incarnated bodies, is to actually bring that spirituality down to the to the plane, to the level or plane in which we are. Yeah. I don't believe in. I don't believe in. And then we'll perhaps talk about this. About you wish to perhaps address the question of deep and spiritual and um, and superficial spirituality. I feel that bringing that spirituality down into our our everyday life, into in every gestures we do, in every thought we have, is is a way of really incarnating it and making it deep. And and then and in that way I feel that we're we're connected, yes, to source and then bliss or whatever, but then we're we're bringing it here. And that's again part of our mission, I guess, also. Uh, yeah. to, to bring it. Yeah. So we can we can go back on that topic of mission and, and purpose. Sorry, we kind of uh, drifted away with the whole bliss thing, but you know No, no, but I think it's really um um I think what you like about the the superficial and deep spirituality, and I think that has really it, it's to me it's very um, in link with the that notion of purpose and, and mission. I think like generally speaking, the a purpose and we f we think too big of it. We think too big that a purpose and a mission has to be, you know, um, what I call the the. Um, the neo complex in matrix you know where you think oh you're the chosen one you know that my mission is to change the world and yes you know we all are changing the world in our ways but we forget just the we forget that the fact that we are literally vibrations just we're like an, a, a, a mega wi-fi you know mm -hmm. each of us and um and then, so just that on its own, it's just being in here is, it has a purpose. It has a purpose. Now, I think it's, it's what we do with it that, um, that makes a big difference, you know, because that's what we're going to emit. So the fact that we just, you know, do the work, start thinking, uh, I don't know, like get, read books and, just just for ourselves that just vibrates like different that just vibrates um, as, um it's new vibration and i'm not saying that it's new because you know they, in the ancient texts like um we you see things like that like everywhere you know but um i think we are at a time now where it's not becoming it's not becoming something as a chosen one it's not becoming like you know we we don't have that sense of oh they are the masters and just the the um, the erudites and the erudit mm -hmm. and and um you know so so now we are at a time where we have the consciousness already because we have already evolved to access all of all the things on an everyday life and to bring them you know as you say to bring them into matter and to bring them in our everyday life and that's the, the purpose that's the mission yeah. to me like, before anything um, then you know like you I mean there are people yes that have you know their mission is to, to I don't know I think about musicians right away you know like um, musicians or creative people like what you do you know it has a per that's the mission where you're like this is how I'm going to put my purpose into action yeah is to materialize that in some ways you know the healers the the artists the artists the um the uh, the leaders you know the politicians there are people that are made for that you know like mm -hmm. that are made to you know speak for well not currently like don't get me wrong no not currently for sure in the world, <laughs> <laughs> they, they will be they are already you know they are you know i think about someone like michael sala you know it's, mm -hmm. it's 
definitely to me it's and that's why it's called exopolitics it's because it's the new politics you know it's uh, yeah. that's the kind of people that will be able to you know so that's the mission that's how we put it into places mm-hmm. but also to me just the the um, it can be anything literally it doesn't have to be big it doesn't have to be, have this idea of like i have to become something important or things like that and that goes with the subject of deep versus spirituality and i think like yeah. When we go into that state of superficial spirituality, it's it's just that notion of I have to, it's 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 like um, it's a bit of a conditioning, you know. I have to attain something. I have to mm-hmm. become something. When you go deeper than that, when you go into the deep levels, you understand, you know, as we always say, that you are a fractal of source. That you are God within. You are, um, you know all these aspects of creation and life um, that we we already are. So the superficiality in, in spirituality is all, it's, to me, it connects a bit about that whole new age thing um, and versus just, yeah, going deep and just embracing everything and just literally finding purpose in the evolution of humankind and of consciousness you know and your and your own yeah and your own uh, and your own consciousness but at the same time it's like you say i think it's really important what you say about this question of because i think that what goes with these uh, the superficial spirituality thing is the whole uh spiritual ego um that often goes and it's sometimes it's not necessarily out of a of a of a, an agenda to become a known person or or to be better than others sometimes it's just because we we people don't necessarily you know they just take what they see and what what the, the superficial spirituality talks about like you say is attaining something becoming something uh having you know an awakening and you know, it's it's never about you know going within, listening to who you are and that fractal source that you already are. So you're you don't have to become everything or anything. And it, it, I think it also connects a little bit with what Eckhart Tolle, which I personally resonate with a lot, says also about you know presence and and being and, and mindfulness is that you just you just are you, you just already are everything. You just need to re- to take away the obstacles, you know. And this is what uh, superficial spirituality does not focus on it's really about trying to get somewhere and you know so yeah I think it's it's really important to talk about that because uh people are exhausting themselves in trying to become something um while everything the answers already are within and it's just a question of letting go of all the crap of all the the stuff the obstacles that are that are preventing us from actually reaching these these answers and already be all that we are i don't know so i don't know i yeah. guess i'm kind of repeating what you say but it's just you yeah. know no 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 yeah mm-hmm. no but and i think like th- that notion of success is really something that is uh, sporting as well what uh, or what has been put into the condi- that notion of conditioning you know it's um mm-hmm. you know you, success you know it's even now come into oh, i have to succeed into my ascension i have to succeed into yeah. you know becoming spiritual you know um, yeah. and then if i'm spiritual i have to look one way i have to speak one way i have to you know all this thing like that. so imagine like all the little things that we attach to whereas it's actually it's actually quite simple mm-hmm. like it's not it's, easy but simple not <laughs> easy but simple <laughs> yeah so to me it's uh, you know i think maybe um that notion of conditioning i think is it's important as well to because sometimes you know if we we like and i see that as well with with in my practice is um um why am i like that why do i you know why do i feel like i why do I don't i find my purpose why don't i find my my mission like where is it and things like that so i think it's um um and, and sometimes I, I, I do, I, I say that when I can is, you know, well, don't forget about the whole conditioning as well. You know, we're, we're conditioned from school, literally from school to be better than each other, to be, you know, if you're not, the, if you don't have the best notes in class, then you're basically stupid. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
and and so that brings you know the question of like what you were saying about the ego you know and the spiritual ego is very uh i think like it's uh, it's the same with that whole notion of truth but we're not gonna go there no <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's a very slippery word <laughs> exactly so um you know that that it's really putting aside and the for us to be able to put that um um notion of spiritual ego or ego all the way it's just literally going back coming back to source and be like well actually i'm nothing you know and everything and everything that's the thing you know but you know it's it's um it's finding peace with i mean in my experience i i because everything that i'm talking about is definitely something that i have experienced i have experienced big time um you know when i started meditating on my, when in, you know when i was a teenager and things like that you know i was thinking oh i need to it's something i need to attain it's something that i need to um you know um i was putting so much pressure on myself and then i think one thing that really i'm looking at my books just to see which one <laughs> i know there was one that really uh, I, well there was a few but um the, it was really like br- um breaking that notion of of um wanting something out of it and just really bringing back to myself and like do you know what like and accepting that even if i don't um even if i don't like become uh, illuminated or whatever you know what you would put on it mm-hmm. I'm I've so I, I've accepted that Vince and I was like do you know what I, I, I at the end I'm just gonna do my best to to understand it just at least to try and understand it you know and I think so that sort of like br- to me that really broke that whole notion of like putting pressure on myself and, like, and, and just accepting that you know I might never and you we can never know everything we can never um you know like um I mean, we still have to bring ourselves back to reality that this is the world that we live in. And at the moment, we're not going to, there's no human being at this stage that is going to like, you know, become illuminated and everyone is going to see their aura and it's going to walk on water. You know, that's mm-hmm. not going to happen. Um, you know, so, and and finding peace with the where we are now and the, the the evolutionary process that we are going through and that time that we're going through what are we experiencing now it is, mm-hmm. is what is going to push us further you know so yeah. it's it goes back a bit to that um what we were what we finished with on, on the last video you know that it's not the, the um, you know the goal and then then what you know mm-hmm. so, um it's the whole journey so it's it's a journey, yeah, not a destination. That's it. Like the journeys yeah. of of evolution is is what makes it evolution. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any. It, the world wouldn't even exist. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Yeah, I don't know where I'm going with that, but um. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's uh, I I wish if you if you permit that we try to um perhaps bring this whole um these three notions. Of, of, of purpose and, and evolution and mission, especially purpose and mission, into perhaps some really grounded things. Um, it doesn't have to be necessarily examples from our own lives, but it can be also discussing, dis- discussing I'm sorry, um, you know, what you see in general with your page, uh, your, your, your clients, or would you be able to give, um, you know, some example or an example of how a person who is in a journey is going to experience his or her purpose or mission or what would be a way in which it would be effective or, you know, going somewhere with that instead of just being like superficial or being, like you say, the neo complex of the chosen one or being in spiritual ego or just wanting to attain something. And I don't know. Do you, do you want to address that? Or if it's, if you have an idea in mind, if you don't, it's cool. We can move on to something else, but. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, I'm probably not the best because the, the, the problem is that every, you know, every person that I see in my practice, they come to, they, they come to, to start 
something, you know, in terms of um, um, because I'm 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 not a medical doctor, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, um, so obviously I can't. Um, so um, what I found was that so okay, I'm gonna give an example. Uh, a, f- a few months ago, um, I had a client that came in and that person was um, in a difficult situation. I'm not going to go too much into detail, but whatever. And um, and it was that, so we've, um, I'm, she's still one of my clients because she wanted to start doing a bit of a work that is um, a, bit, a bit deeper, like we, we go, um, so we see each other. And... Um, <clears throat> And there was this whole, so what we were working on was really that notion of, of purpose because she felt like she she didn't know what she was here to do, you know. Mm-hmm. She loved a lot of things and, you know, she um, was very, you know, connected spiritually, um, but it was all a bit of a blur. And through the work that she has done right like with my help but that she has done she texted me literally like a couple of weeks ago and she said um something like i um something along the line like i find my purpose and my purpose is to be who i am and to to just be uh, like happy I still have chills just like wow. <laughs> I was, it was just like so beautiful to read. And so I was just like, oh f- yes, like so she got it. <laughs> yeah, literally it was that. And and mm-hmm. and and she t- she did tell me and she said, like, I since I've discovered that, I have literally it's a new, it's a whole new life for me, you know? Yeah. It's a whole new life because I you stop pressuring yourself that you have to become something you stop pressuring yourself that you have to find something you know so we go back into that notion of it's all there it's all there but when we start to do the work we start to find the resources we start to find and and i think it goes as well with that notion of being completely cut off with everything you when you do the work and you realize what you are you realize how much you're connected to everything. You realize that you're never on your own. You realize that you literally can do everything that you put your mind into, you know? Yeah. So then there is not just one purpose. You know, yeah. the purpose is is just literally finding who you are and finding and and um and then you know who knows where the mission goes, you know. I mean, she works with um well i don't want to say too much but um yeah it's okay but i mean um, con- concretely she she has brought her purpose into action concrete actions in which she can inter um interact with the world yeah, and, and, well, and bring but, that light yeah so yeah. W- w- when she when she found her purpose of just being and being happy then her mission just was what she was already doing, but she mm-hmm. was doing it in a new way where she, well, she was radiating and she was vibrating. So then obviously it has an impact and and that's her mission is just to, you know, bring, just be who she is in all the, the um, you know, the, with with all the, um, the, the, the amazing resources and the amazing, the personality and all on and all that and you know that that radiates love and that radiates acceptance and that re- radiates respect and that re- radiates you know all these aspects and all these higher vibrations mm-hmm. um, and then to bring it into your mission into your work into whatever you do, do for a living you know so uh, yeah um there's there's something that i I've, I've um heard many times in the spiritual you know realm or community or whatever is two terms which are uh, light pillars and light workers. Those are terms. Again, a lot of people put a lot of things in terms, so I'm I'm not I'm not into labeling things. But I would just like to address these two things because I think they kind of talk about what we're talking about also. And light pillars are considered souls who came here to actually just be 
just be an energy and radiate that energy extremely strong. And just by being who they are when they walk in the street, when they're in the metro, when they're whatever it is they're doing, they just radiate by who they are a form of, I don't know, um, they activate other people or they, they bring some sort of light or they bring some sort of consciousness out there. And then the light workers would be considered people who actually help the world by what they do. Uh, either a healing or, you know, artists or transmitters. I don't know. And there is this dichotomy between like both. And I always found that like wondering why would there be a difference between both and why can't a healer be also bringing, you know, light or whatever or radiating something of his light or her light through just being or by being in a place do we need to accomplish something? Do you need? Do we need to be have a particular job or something, or like we say, mission that's gonna have, you know, is, is that a need or not? And I'm, you know, I'm I'm being the devil's advocate here because I probably have an idea of what your answer is, but I just want to hear you tell me what you th- feel about that and those terms. I mean, personally, I don't resonate with any of it. Um because to me so whether you are uh, you know a star seed or you are um you know what i call the originals so uh, when i refer to as the originals is the originals human souls um and um, can you define that a little bit more this way we understand what you mean by that so when I when I say like um, originals, it means the the pure earthly or Terran's consciousness. So okay, people that, that don't come from other worlds. Let's say okay, okay, all right, Terrans souls. Yeah, Terrans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, so whether you one or the other, we all incarnate on human bodies and the human body is the um tool or the um the the channel where we can express and um vibrate frequencies all of us that no matter well this is why we are all the same because that our shell, our present shell, is what gives us the the possibility to experience life and to um, em- emit our frequencies. Okay, yeah. so <clears throat> um, when it comes to I to, for me we all are light pillars and light workers Mm -hmm. but what is the 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 difference is the intention so Mm. um this is why i believe that when you start being in tune with who you are with your frequency when you start being in tune with your environment when you reconnect with um everything with the whole um then you just there's no i can't see another way to become a light uh what is it the light um, pillar or worker pillar that's the one i was talking about light pillar um and a light worker because you generate light by um I'm gonna finish that sentence and then I'm gonna jump onto something else. I you gonna yeah, you generate light just by being because you you connect back to the whole. Yeah. Now we are actually light beings, like um, you know, I we there's biophotons that we by the biophotons that we carry within ourselves, genetic, like yeah, in, in terms of genetic, uh <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it's not perceivable to the human eye, but we do have light. We are the human body is made of also, you know, um, is also made of light. Yeah. So 
and that's just a, a, a chemical thing, you know, it's, it's, um, that's how it is. So, and again, I think when we go back to this whole, like, like pillar and like worker, we go back into, it's, a, you know, those people that have light pillars. So it goes back into like being the chosen, or oh, they're the chosen ones, you know, they, they, if we want to evolve as a whole, and which will happen, and there will be people that, you know, maybe will take a bit more time than others, and that's fine. But we have to just really go back into this sense of unity and that and of of um yeah of unity of what we are so we have the the blueprint of the of being a human is the same for everyone the essence is unique um so yeah being so, equal is, but different like equal in the sense that there's no better people or people we should worship or admire or put down but then unique and different in in our soul in our in our essence yeah and and if you i mean i believe that this is what makes humanity so rich and so interesting to many 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 other beings or just in in because we're we we're very very you know it's it's i i um and you know that's what elena was talking about in her last video when she said that human human beings were meant were always meant to be teachers and to be you know, because we there is so much richness to 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 human beings. You know, so um, yeah, absolutely, we're equal but different, and um, and uh, yeah, that's um, yeah. So basically, we can all as 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 being of light and being all frequency and all being energy. Since everything's energy anyway, I mean everything is basically energy, and since we are that, um, the that essence we talk about, which is unique, but even equal to, you know, we're all equal, but that essence, which is unique to each of us, is the frequency in which each one of us will radiate that light. And that will bring, you know, to the world, um, a particular piece of the puzzle that we're all each here to bring. And then if we accompany that through a form of doing or an act through maybe a job if we're healers or like we say that's what we could call perhaps the mission thing um then that's that's good too but it's not essential so basically what we would say is that everybody is in a way if we use the words that are used in the in the spiritual community we're all light pillars basically but then some choose to be light pillars and also bring in the 3D, in the in the matter on the on the planet to bring also their light in the form of certain gestures, actions, creations that will can will be considered a form of mission if we want. Does that make sense? Is that how you would sort of wrap up yeah, that? That makes, that, yeah. make, that makes total sense. I think like if I so if, if we go further, I think to me is um a light we all um pillars then you choose to be a light pillar or any other pillar that you want to be you know so depending yeah. on why you vibrate yeah then light worker you choose to be a light worker by the way you are what with what you're bearing you know so mm -hmm. um I, to me, like a light worker can be someone that works in law, in in uh, you know, with, for the justice. It can be someone that, um, you know, work um, in a supermarket or in a supermarket. <laughs> you know, it can be someone that does computing. It can be someone you know, light worker is it all to me is all like the intention that you're going to bring. Why are you doing this? Are you doing yes to um you know for self-purpose and i think this is what when we talk about service to others to me service to others has nothing to do with just being a healer mm -hmm. 
-hmm. service to others is about the intention that you that drives you why are you doing this are you doing this for you know if if all of us in all our different areas that we were working at the, the to the the simplest job to the most complicated one um you know if we if all, all of us were having this intention of like i'm doing this for the greater good and i'm doing mm -hmm. this for you know for as a purpose of for for humans evolution for humans consciousness for humans um then the world would be in a different place today. Um, so to me, a light worker, it, it, it's everyone is a light worker as long as you bring your light, you bear your light to your work, you know, then you're Absolutely. like, so. Absolutely. And it's really the way in which you do things. It's a state of being more than a stand of doing. And then that it's, it's going to be the way in which you talk to people around you or um, the mindfulness in which you you will do every action rather than just being like again this neo complex of like i am a light worker and i'm you know and i'm a healer and it's of course you know we have this thing with healers but you know it's it's not everything because you i'm sure you probably met some healers who were, had a big spiritual ego <laughs> and were perhaps not doing things with an agenda that was uh you know, for the surface of, of others. So again, it's not a question of putting labels on what you do, but how you do it in the space, you know, how much you, you incarnate your, your your fractal of source that you are in what you do, whatever that is, you know, serving yeah. coffee, uh, you know, whatever. And so we have to stop having this pressure about doing something special that spiritually, superficially looks good and has the whole, you know, little bit of the guru thing going on there and that's super dangerous in terms of losing yourself in that yeah and bringing people you know with you yeah absolutely and i think i i um i mean as long as you for me like my red flag is always um you know when you try and just exactly what you say like i just um finding um you know, little little things are going to tell you, okay, that's like a, it's a service to self, you know, rather than service to others. So, but yeah, um, getting rid of all that. Um, and also, also, I don't even know why, like what's the, what's the big thing about everyone, like about being a healer, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I, I don't like, it's, it's, it's nothing, um, there's nothing magical like it's do you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's no more than like i'm amazed with the people that just uh, i don't know like uh, um i mean i've i've had different jobs and i've worked with in in sales as well you know and uh, and things like that and i i've met people that have been doing that for like 30 years and they still have the smile and things like that. i'm amazed by that i'm like mm -hmm. this is that's like worker you know like being mm -hmm. able to deal with especially in our days you know with like it's not easy, like, you know, so um, that's, that takes, you know, you stand up like 10 hours of the day, you, and things like that, you know, that's, that's, do you know what I mean? It's just, um, I just, yeah. I feel like it's, it's, it goes back to the essence and, and your purpose, you know, and like, who, who are you? What, what do you like doing? Then being, be a light worker in whatever you like doing, you know? Yeah. If, if you like, yeah i don't know whatever if you like driving cars then you know and being a, a taxi driver then oh my god be a light worker being a, a, a taxi driver you know like, mm -hmm. it's yeah. just the so, more people you encounter the more you will touch them and you will bring that light and it's just amazing you know whatever it is uh, yeah, yeah absolutely we yeah. know that just just a tiny just a smile and just a, a hello and things can make a big difference in someone's day you know so yeah so um yeah, just it's to me it's it's very um we all like bearers and, and like mm -hmm. <laughs> So let's say today someone comes to you in your practice and says, I'm confused. Um I don't know how to find, you know, who I am, what I want, what is my purpose, what is my mission, what is this whole ascension thing? And you know, someone who's just kind of in the beginning of this journey. I know I'm asking you a tough question, but like, what what would be your words to this person? Concretely, like, what would be your words to this person? The first thing I, sh I will ask is like, where is this coming from? So, What's your intention? 
no, I'd be like, why, like, what, why are you looking? What, where is this coming from? When, how did it start? Your, th your thinking process of, um, trying to find your purpose and, and like, like, I, I'd say like, like took me through it, you know, like mm -hmm. where, where does it come from? Where does, where, where does this question come from? What should it do? And the purpose of that would be for you to determine if it comes from a conditioning of a society or a spiritual, superficial, spiritual type of thing. Or is it really coming from a point where the person is really ready to go within? And, you know, is that is that the purpose of this question for you? The purpose of the question is to start the best for the person to start thinking inside. And to start thinking, why did I ask, you know, why did I... Because ultimately, like what you'll find is that what they're missing is a connection, their connection to themselves, a connection to, you know, um, their um, frequency. Yeah, exactly. You know, so your the, the purpose of the question is to start into like, why, like, what is it that you want to fulfill by finding your purpose? Mm -hmm. um, so, and then we start, you know, you 90 percent of the time even like 95 not to say 100 but um we'll we'll find that it, it you know there is something that has happened uh you know in, in an experience or, or or good or bad it can be something oh, I, i've read a book that really changed my life and now i feel like okay good then you know like that's that's great it's a good start you know and then we so we we peel the onion basically you know so um um because rather than looking at far or oh, I'm I'm what is my purpose meaning what am I what I, do I do I need to achieve mm -hmm. to find my purpose is so the second question is it'd be like where is your purpose you know why or where sorry I didn't hear you well where where yeah hmm, interesting where in the sense of like is it in your head? Is it in your heart? Is it in your body? Is that what you mean by where? I don't know. I'd be I, that's a question I'd be asking. I'd say, where is your purpose? Is it outside of you? Is it within yourself? Is it is it something that you yeah again that you feel like you're missing? Is it like where is it? Right. Those I so I always bring back to the to the person. I think like this is. Because then we find the answers, you know, all the answers, and we we, and most of the time we're like, oh well, actually, like yeah, my purpose. And then sometimes you know there's gonna be like, oh, I find my I found my purpose. My purpose is to um, write a book, mm -hmm. or is to uh, start taking drawing classes, you know, or it's you know, so that's sort of like brings the terms of the purpose and then the people are going to find because they're going to be um they're going to nurture themselves with what resonated with them and then that's sort of the 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 nurturing becomes the purpose because now i feel nurtured and then i find i open to my mission which is writing 10 books okay so um, I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to go through the process with you because, again, I like it when we, we try to, you know, ground it and see if a person who is listening to this video is thinking, oh, okay, that's interesting, the notion of evolution and purpose and um, what is it again? Um, mission. And then how, you know, um, probably there's a lot of people who are listening to this video who are already in a journey, inner journey, or have found their purpose or have found their mission or, uh, but I also think there's people and there's probably going to be more and more people with, you know, the changes that takes place in this world of um, sort of starting this whole process and this whole journey. And I'm wondering, you know, not necessarily sure what the difference between purpose and mission is and what is that all about and how do I find mine and, you know, what is it? So having really specific examples can be a way to just the person can actually ask him or herself those questions and think, OK, so where is, is my purpose? Like you said, it's it's interesting. Where does it lie? Is it is it 
you know, is it in my body? Is it in my heart? Is it is it something I'm just analyzing too much to death, and it's it's in my brain? It's not it's not grounded in, into my body, into my heart, or you know, what is it that thing I want to do? You know, is it uh, is it just a thing I want to do, and why do I want to do? What's my agenda behind it? Is it to give give receive recognition, or is it because it's really something that drives me, drives my soul? So I think those are important questions that you know people will end up asking themselves if you know through their life journey or eventually through this video, this humble video, I don't know. Uh, so that's why I wanted to just really go into the, the more specific um, elements of um, of this. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where, you, when, go ahead. When you, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, um, I think when it comes to the mission, I, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd say like, oh, look for you, like find your mission. I'd say like, just stop looking for it. Yeah. Stop looking for it and just go, come back to the source, come back to the root come back to the root like and i think it goes back a bit into like the video that we the last video when we were talking about finding out what i like what i don't like mm -hmm. i think for me like coming back to the root is always you know it's coming back to yeah, the essence and be like because the purpose and the mission or whatever we want to call it is is all about it's it's really just um it's all already there and i just want to say like something actually reminds me of something um I had um, a client that um, was, yeah, she well, wasn't in, um, had a difficult time and, 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 but it was just about, she had a difficult time because she felt like she was losing herself uh, in terms of um, everything that was, um, she was experiencing in her life and, and that she, she felt like she had, she was um, not losing herself in terms of losing her mind, but losing her essence you know losing her personality losing like um and then and she because i always have a little bit of a i always check in with people like after a session and things like that so i and she said like oh i can't wait um she was like oh yeah um to give me news and things like that. she was like but i still i can't wait to um find myself again i'm doing like a rough translation mm -hmm. and and the first and I, I so I, immediately at so I was like, there's like, it's nothing to find. It's already there. Like, keep this in mind. Like, why, why you just the person that you want to find is yourself, you know, you, that you want to find back is yourself, you know. So yeah. find it's there's nothing to find. It's already there. It's just been um, caged or, or, you know, put layers on from like you know, the, um, experiences or situation, you know, that or things that happened, you know. Um, so, and I think this is really important as well when it comes to the mission and purpose. Like, it's already there. It's just literally, there's, it's, don't go and look out, like, really come back to self and because it's already, already there. It's, it's, it's just a matter of, of awakening. And to me, this is what the whole meaning of awakening is. And this is where it is awakening is waking up something so yeah. if we wake it up it's already there you know yeah absolutely and if, like it, <laughs> that you're what and i'm screaming no you're not <laughs> you're not you're, you're intense <laughs> you love what you talk about it shows it's wonderful um i yeah i totally resonate with what you say in the sense that uh, we have to stop looking outside for something that's already there but what you also say is that question of onion layers that are covering all this. And I think that really comes back to what we were saying about hearing your frequency in the last video, because um, it's pretty, it's, it's the same thing, basically, you know, when finding yourself and hearing your own frequency and finding your mission and all of this is basically the same thing. And it always comes back to, yeah, going within again, learning who you are, but just most of all starting at the beginning to take away the layers of trauma of hurt of conditioning of because this is the reason why we're not who we really are or that we don't know what we're supposed to do whatever it's not because we haven't attained it it's just because there's a lot of shit sorry for the word on top of it and it's just a question of taking these layers off and so again you don't need anyone basically to take those layers off okay you can be supported accompanied by some sort of guidance or healer or whatever, but that or friend or whoever, but it's really about you just taking these onion peels off and then 
what's left is automatically you and that fractal of source that you are that light that you are that you know it's it's it's, it's evident but we're not being told that obviously in school and stuff like that this is not you know we're not being taught that it's all about you know exterior to ourself exterior to ourself getting the validation from outside from the parents from the teachers from the politicians the you know having success and it is never about peeling the layers off and just finding that beautiful shiny being that you are inside and with all the answers and all that frequency and and um I don't know I yeah I agree with that I I agree with you in the sense that we have to really stop searching outside I um is there a Anything else you would like to to add about the the whole evolution and mission and uh, the whole uh, purpose thing? I think like just one thing to rebound a bit from rebounds from what you were saying. Yeah. Um, so that notion of because you were talking about the fact of you know doing something to uh, to get somewhere, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think like one um, a little maybe something that really helped me anyway um was to start observing a lot more and that came with um for example uh in my meditations so um stop being a doer um, um, and when you're in a meditative state just start to observe yourself so it's about like taking yourself and that's the same with like your thinking patterns, your 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 behavior, your emotions, your um, just the way you function, and that gives back. Just being an observer a bit more, without judgment, without um, you know, just really start to like get your it's it's like giving yourself a bit of space with yourself, so you can start of observing everything that you are, and then and then suddenly it's not about you know going from point a to point b it's just like mm -hmm. at the moment like in the present moment just observing yeah absolutely it um that it's what we call that presence uh that presence to oneself which you also have with people obviously but being that with yourself is absolutely crucial as well because we especially when we're we are in this thing about service to others we tend to give a lot to other people to their presence to others to listen to them to be there for them but it's really really crucial that we don't forget and like you said about your client to lose yourself in the other or to or I don't know if this exactly what she meant but sometimes we tend to lose that center and, and just be like into people's lives and, and just about what they want or what they need and and then we lose ourselves into that and I know that's something I'm really um you know I tend to lose myself also like that so I, I know what that feels like but just to be present to to all these aspects of us, to all these layers, the emotional, the the trauma, the whole thing, just to look at it without judgment and, and just yeah, accept it for what it is. And then you're able to to alchemize it and, and transform it, I guess, you know, with the whole healing process, which is the whole journey of, of this 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 thing. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I wish to um if that's okay, I would like to share something with, with the people about something that connects this and also um, the question of frequency we talked about last time because it's something that I had in mind that I wanted to share about. Um, and it's going to be a, a, an example of my own experience uh, because I'm, I'm, you know, those who follow my channel know that I really like to go into really like specific examples of what I'm going through because I find that it's not about being, it's not a question of being narcissistic about it, but it's just a question of sharing in a very exemplified way what I go through. This way, sometimes people can relate or not, but it gives them an idea of uh, things um, I go through. For example, I, with this whole question of frequency and, and hearing your own frequency, I realized that one of the reasons why um, I was losing sense of purpose in my life and, and, and life actually making sense was the fact that I could not hear that frequency. And, and then I thought, well, how can I, how can I hear that frequency so I can find sense back into my life? And then, like I told you, I, I, I confided in you about my reflection on that is that I realized personally, and this is just my personal journey, is that I realized that, that not being in my mindfulness of every moment, just being extremely present and observant about everything I do, being in my body, being when I do the dishes, to be there, to feel 
the warm water in my hands, know what my body feels, um, know, you know, what my feelings are. And then really, for me, it really helped me connect back to this to this question of frequency. And um, and then I feel that hearing the frequency is really the way in which we can actually attain, not attain, but find back into ourselves this whole question of of purpose and mission. So it's like it's like a purpose. It's like a, there's a journey there, and there's there's stepping stones. And I think that by going within, clearing all the messy stuff, and then being able after that to connect to your to your to your frequency. And when you you can hear your frequency, then you you find automatically your purpose and your mission. I don't know if that resonates with you. Yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, yeah, that definitely resonated with me in my own experience as well. And finding, um, being more, I think being more present for sure is a, is a big, uh, is a big element and is a big key into when we feel a little bit lost or we feel a bit, um, you know, outside ourselves, um, or not aligned or not grounded, um, you know, finding back that journey to the present moment. And um, because most of the time we realize that, well, actually, it's all good, <laughs> you know. Um, and so, yeah, I just, every, yeah, that really resonated with me in, um, in my own experience. And um, I think what um, really helped me um, was to just jump. I think I, there was a time in my life where I was so, you know, lost with um, what I wanted to do and uh, with um, my sense of existing, you know, um, and what I, I think I was like, well, actually, I don't have anything to lose anymore. So I'm just going to dive in. And I yeah. started, that's when I really started to um, stop the superficial and and dive in into the deep and, and, and actually, you know, yeah, you just find a lot of beautiful things <laughs> rather <laughs> than... Um, when you have nothing to lose yeah well yeah and just just you know it, that's why it's sometimes uh, i feel like um i say like it's simple because it is it's, it's not easy i think what you say is perfectly said it's not easy but it's actually very simple and you know one i think if i have if i were to add just one last thing would be feed yourself like nurture yourself with you know it can be books it can be nature it can be whatever that um resonate really um gets you to question gets you to uh observe gets you to come back to to uh, the present moment gets you to um yeah just I, that was really really when i started reading i've read countless books into like I, I started with buddhism and then i went to metaphysics and then i went to quantum physics and then i went to because I, I needed to like get you know i was in the state i was like i, I want to know i want to know i want to know um and um and that really helped me to find my way and to find okay that resonates mm -hmm. doesn't resonate and to find you know my resonance and to find my own frequency so um you know just yeah it's interesting because what you say about the books, we, we some people could think, oh, well, this is a very intellectual and mental attitude to to trying to find yourself. And it, it can be, you know, uh, but at the same time, I know from knowing you a little bit more, I know that you bring this to your heart. It's not just about reading notions and, and performing mentally, intellectually. It's it's really about bringing, when, when you resonate with something, you bring it back to your heart and to your body, because I know you listen to your the sensations in your body very much. And I think that's also a way in which to know what resonates with you very much and with your essence. And then, you yeah. know, 
so yeah yeah and I mean also I have a really shit memory so you know it's like <laughs> what I read is really that's why for me it goes through the body because mm -hmm. that's the only way that I can because otherwise I, I, I couldn't remember yeah you're imprinted into your essence and your body yeah but also I just I think it it's a you know intellectual we have a brain for something intellectual is not necessarily something you know it's it's and yeah it's not necessarily something bad to be an in intellectual no. you know it's something that it should be used the intellectual should be used you know books are like if you start you know reading just the i don't know the uh, bhagavad gita or you know there are plenty or just read the bible i don't know like do you mm. know what i mean like there are plenty in every it's ancient text it's just mm. it's i think what's uh, important is to read and the lines in everything in every books just but it nurtures our consciousness it nurtures because it's still you know if we go into like a bit deeper you know it goes into the layers so it's not necessarily the past it's not necessarily the future it all goes at one point it all connects at one point in the present moment yeah. and so it's knowledge that is it's you know it's like saying oh well you know so i'm sure if everyone would say like oh yeah i would love to read the akashic records well you know we have loads of akashic records that are in books you know so um um yeah i just um it's, it's a tool basically like it's reading a yeah, it's a tool a, like like consciousness is a tool and, for me it's, mm -hmm. it has been a tool and it's still a tool and i i love reading i enjoy reading plenty of things and and then yeah we just see where it goes you know yeah and then you connect it to you you both need the heart and the head anyway we're, we're that's why we have both basically <laughs> so you you know you use both in the best way and then you, you make the best out of it so that's the whole purpose and there are lots of things that i've read that do doesn't resonate you know and yeah. i still think it's it's you know it brings perspective it brings you know just a, a, a better to me it brought a better understanding of you know what we are who we are um who i am and and things like that so yeah quentin thank you so much for uh this super conversation we had a lot of fun and again with we could we talk about we could talk about this for hours and hours but yeah. we're gonna we're gonna stop here i'm gonna put the links again the, to holos healing uh in the description below and i want to thank you so much for uh just you know sharing with me and uh, sharing with people uh what's uh you know what you feel what's your journey and uh, how you see things so thank you so much for being there and uh have a great thank day you. thank you <laughs> <laughs> all right and uh, yeah we'll talk to you soon take great care of yourself bye All my gratitude for helping this channel bring positive vibes to more people.